呃，大家好，我是一个还在路上的创业者，然后在过去的四年当中，我们完成了三轮的融资，呃，总数超过就是已经做到了过千万的 Play 轮，但是在一八年的时候呢，我们遇到了很严重的打击啊，就是很基本上是毁灭性的，主要原因是因为我们在战略上的一些失误，然后导致我们呃没有办法顺利融到下一轮。那么这里面呢，其实我有一个问题，就是说。呃，其实商业的这种触觉或者说机会，其实很容易确定的。就比如说什么赛道啊，或者是点子啊，我们叫风口啊这一些。但是我们觉得最大的风险可能是对人的这种风险管理。那我就想问一下，站在硅谷的这种投资的角度，呃，如何去判定在决策前对一个创业者的这个标准是什么？因为刚刚我所听到的这个演讲，更多的是说我们决策以后。怎么去帮助创业者去规避风险啊？或者说，如何的在每个节奏上去去更好的去发展？这第一个问题哈、啊。那第二个问题呢，就针对创新这个事情，我们呃，因为很多兄弟公司或者说跟中国的这个投资界关系走得比较密切，我们一直在探讨一个问题：这个创新它是一把双利剑，就是这我按照数据来看，呃。大部分可能百分之九十九的这种颠覆性的创新都是以失败告终的。那么这里面呢，如果是站在硅谷的投资的角度，是以市场为导向优先，还是以所谓的技术颠覆性的这个这个这个标准为优先？谢谢。Uh, hi Peter. Uh, I am a young entrepreneur, entrepreneur on my way to developing my own business. Actually,、uh, my company started four years ago. And over the past four years, we have、uh, completed three rounds of uh, 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 venture capital, total、uh, totaling、uh, over 10 million RMB. However, in 2018, we suffered from a disastrous blow because of our mistakes in business strategy. Therefore, we lacked capital. Um, just now, you mentioned that、uh, it is、uh, relatively、uh, easy to catch business opportunities.、Uh, it is all about、uh, finding the right ideas and the correct path to develop、uh, the ideas. And、uh, you also mentioned about、uh, people. And I believe、uh, the biggest risks come from people. And、uh, just now, you mentioned、uh, your presentation. I think. Mainly focuses on how we manage risk after decision making. So my first question is that before making decisions, how we can manage our risks by choosing the correct persons, or I would like to know what kind of standards for us to select young entrepreneurs. And the second. Question is about innovation, and、uh, actually, innovation, as I see it, is a double-edged sword. Statistically, statistically, we know that、uh, about 99 percent of the innovations end in failure. So, when we look at innovation, how do we perceive innovation? Should we perceive innovation from A market orientation perspective, or we should focus on what kind of disruptive technologies that innovation can bring us. Thank you. Okay, so so use、um, the microphone, yes, please. Oh yeah, yeah. so、um, I, I, I'd like to. I guess I'll take those two in in sequence, and we'll do one then the other. So I want to clarify that when I when we talk about managing risk. It is talking about. I, I am referring to identifying risk and taking what you might call evasive maneuvers before you know before the boat hits the rocks. In other words, risk assessment happens throughout the entire life cycle of of, of a startup. And from an investor perspective, identifying the risks and identifying the ways in which those risks can be managed and minimized. Is something you do before you even make an investment. You follow on having made an investment with measures that let you have what I call instrumentation or a dashboard 
on the business in the form of investor relations, the right kinds of reporting, the right kinds of financial management, and so forth, that also let you continue to assess risk after the investment and make changes along the way. And this is also why I'm a, I'm a very big advocate of making investment in small tranches so that there's always, you know, the next chunk of capital is always based on having met the milestones and accommodated, excuse me, accommodating the obstacles along the way. So just to be clear, it's not about doing any of that after the fact. It's actually the other way around. It's figuring out what can go wrong before you even give it a chance to do so. 你已经做了决策以后再去降低和管理你的风险这个风险呢他说是在整个你创业的过程当中也就是说在你之前去判断去决定去选人在整个的过程中你要去判断这个风险啊所以他说他澄清一下这个就是你要先能够去就是辨别
and it failed miserably because they had no idea IBM, with its traditional customer base of large corporations and, and corporate IT executives, had no idea how to sell this to individuals for their personal use. And so the best operating system ever built for PCs never got off the ground, never made it up off the ground. 呃，他举了个例子，就是 IBM 的例子啊。他说呢，以前就是我们讲说计算机的操作系统啊，大家都知道啊。那计算机操作系统呢，最早做到个人电脑操作系统的是 IBM 公司。这个操作系统呢，叫做就是 OS 2 OS 2呢，在这个这个当时这个系统出来的时候是在一九八零年。你想，他在那么早的时候，他就已经有个人电脑的操作系统。但是呢，在那个时候呢，这个这个。我们现在很多人都没有听说过，为啥没有听说？因为从来没有在市场上出现过。为什么没有出现过呢？因为 IBM 它的当时的客户都是大公司，都是这些大大型的公司的客户。也就是说呢，那个时候它的客户里面其实并不需要个人电脑，所以那个时机不成熟。你也不能说它那个技术不好，或者说它的这个技术有漏洞，只是说它面对的客户呢，并不是能够使用个人电脑，所以时机不成熟。所以在一九八零年就出了个人电脑的操作系统，但是没有人知道，而且是一个巨大的一个失败。And by the way, there are hundreds of stories like that since then. 那也有有很多这样的故事啊，就是。这个技术很重要，但是技术它因为在这个时机不成熟，所以技术出来了以后呢，也没有很好的应用。But last but not least, there are also lots of stories where, when technologists and technology innovators work together with market innovators and people that understand how to bring something new to the market and make it compelling and make it defensible over time. That's when some truly phenomenal, fantastic products have been brought to market and have dominated and continue to dominate. 但也有这样的故事啊，就是说有些这个呃科技工作者和这些发明家，他们的这些科技的产品出来了以后，好的技术出来了以后呢，他们跟那些市场的专家来一起合作。那么市场的专家呢，就可以把他的产品呢带向市场，然后呢，这个市这个这个产品它就一下子占领了整个的市场。产生了巨大的利益，那么这就是一些这种例子也成功例子非常多。那证明就是说呢，你今天有技术的时候，你必须要跟这些懂得市场的人、懂得销售的人来合作，你才能成功。The problem is that getting technologists and marketers to work together is just slightly easier, just slightly harder than getting cats and mice to live together. 但是，如果让这个就是搞技术的人啊，和做销售和做市场的人一起工作啊。它非常非常难，难难就难像什么呢？就难于就像这个猫和老鼠在一起共共处一样难。好的，谢谢 Peter， 谢谢 Diana， 那么也谢谢我们三位嘉宾。那么现在呢，我们就要进入到与现场观众的互动环节了。那么呢，我。